Hello everybody, welcome to NEET Crash Course. Now let us go through some of the practice questions, starting with the chapter Microbes in Human Welfare. Partially degraded concentrate of milk, fat and casein. The first question talks about partially degraded concentrate of milk, fat and casein. Casein is the protein, so this combination of milk, fat and protein is collectively referred to as cheese. So the correct answer is option C. Indian curd is prepared by inoculating cream and skim milk with now one of the most important bacteria which are commonly used in preparing Indian curd actually it can be more than one correct option the answer is lactobacillus acidophilus however bulgaricus is also employed in making yogurt but since the question says Indian curd the more appropriate answer would be lactobacillus acidophilus third question says mark the incorrect option now if you look at the options most of them are distillated alcoholic beverages but there's one which is undistilled the undistilled alcoholic beverage is wine so the incorrect option or the odd one out is wine the fourth question says which of the following product is not obtained from fermented soya sauce obviously dosa is not obtained from fermentation of soya sauce so the correct answer is option d fifth question select the odd one out with respect to the source of antibiotics now you get antibiotics from all of them from bacteria from lichens from fungi however we do not obtain antibiotics from seeded plants or angiosperms so the correct answer the odd one out among the given options is last option the sixth question says which one of the following enzymes are employed in conversion of corn starch to fructose rich corn syrup so you are converting something which is a polysaccharide such as a starch into something which is a monosaccharide which is fructose so you know that starch is basically composed of glucose you also have to isomerize glucose into fructose so you will need amylases, you will need glucoamylases to obtain glucose residues and isomerases to obtain fructose. So all of them are correct options in this answer. Seventh question says the organic acid that is used in pharmaceuticals, coloring agents and plastic industries is acetic acid. So acetobacter aceti is the source of acetic acid that is extracted on an industrial scale. Eighth question says the concept of sustainable agriculture lies in, it lies in using the spores of Bacillus thuringiensis for pest control. See Bacillus thuringiensis is a living organism, it is a bacteria. You are using the spores from this bacteria in order to control caterpillar pests. So you are using a biological controlling method. So it's called a biocontrol agent and this is a form of sustainable agriculture because we all learnt that it is a narrow range it is uh, species specific it does not kill the beneficial insects so the correct answer is last option ninth question says which of the following has been used for controlling sugarcane leaf hoppers so mostly predator bugs have been used in order to control these leaf hoppers which cause extensive damage in sugarcane crop so it is option a the 10th question says find the odd one out with respect to the following now in all of these are herbicides as it is mentioned bio herbicides that they are basically natural agents which destroy weeds and uh, plants which are unwanted except cochleomia and this cochleomia happens to be a parasitic fly it is not a bio herbicide it is actually a fly so that is the odd one out 11th question says devine and collego are two agricultural substances which are routinely used as bio herbicides so these are very famous bio herbicides which are used for the destruction of unwanted crops or weeds 12th question says when was ganga action plan launched so ganga action plan was launched in the month of june in the year 1985 so the correct answer happens to be 1985 option a 13th question says eutrophication eutrophication means nutrient enrichment of water the water gets enriched with nitrates and phosphates and there's a burgeoning of 
growth of algae and plants in the water and this leads to low dissolved oxygen that is because there are so many plants growing in the water and they all compete with oxygen compete with each other for dissolved oxygen so the water body will have dissolved oxygen however another way of writing low dissolved oxygen is a very high biochemical oxygen demand so either they would have mentioned it as low dissolved oxygen or they would have mentioned it as high biochemical oxygen demand so the correct answer is option c the 14th question says which of the following is responsible for yogurt formation so for yogurt formation routinely we employ streptococcus thermophilus and lactobacillus pulgaricus in india we just refer to it as curd otherwise you know that the curdled milk is also referred to as yogurt so streptococcus thermophilus and it is not thermophiles it is thermophilus and lactobacillus pulgaricus are mostly employed in yogurt formation so it is option c the 15th question says antibiotic obtained from lichen there is a lichen called eusnia and it is the source of an antibiotic that is called the eusnic acid so the correct answer is option b now moving on to the next chapter that is biodiversity and conservation critically endangered animal species of india about 31 different critically endangered species have been identified specially with regard to animals in our country so the first question the correct answer is option a ladakh is a region that is present in which biogeographical zone in india the biogeographical zone that includes ladakh is option c that is trans himalayan range so it is option c The third question says what is genetic diversity related to so obviously when we say genetic diversity it is the diversity which exists within the members belonging to the same species because not all of us are identical in terms of our genetic constitution so genetic diversity is entirely based on gene related or gene based diversity The fourth question is Kaziranga National Park of Assam you all must have heard is famous for what it is famous for one horned rhinoceros so it is a conservation unit for one horned rhinoceros so answer is option D The fifth question says which one of the following is not included under in situ conservation remember in situ conservation means like i had told you to conserve the tiger you conserve the forest that means you conserve the tiger in its natural habitat then it is referred to as in situ conservation here botanical garden is not an in situ conservation because in botanical garden you are basically uh taking the plant away from its natural habitat and in artificial setup you are conserving it so the odd one out in the fifth question is option b that is botanical garden it is not in situ it is ex situ conservation sixth question says indri indri actually the name is i n d r i i n d r i it happens to be the largest lemur the gi- giant lemur or lemur of madagascar so indri indri is a giant lemur which is found in madagascar option d seventh one which of the following is alien or exotic species which accidentally got introduced from foreign country or from a foreign location all of them parthenia hysterophorus which is carrot grass lantana camera icornia crassipus or the water hyacinth all of them were accidentally introduced in our country they do not originally belong to our country native is different so they are called exotic species and today they have overridden they have overtaken the local population and so they are posing a threat to the local species so these are actually one of the reason or one of the causes for biodiversity loss that is alien species invasion so the correct answer is option d eighth question says black buck now black buck antelope cervicapra is actually identified as vulnerable species vulnerable species means of course as you know it does not face any immediate threat of extinction but in the near future if care is not taken if proper concern is not offered towards it then it may step into the species of or it may step into the category of endangered species so black buck option c vulnerable species 
Ninth question is in which zone limited human activity is permitted? Now these are all the zones of biosphere reserve. So please remember all the zones that are mentioned here are the zones of biosphere reserves which are in situ conservation units and there are three distinct zones a core zone a buffer zone and a manipulation zone here limited human activity is allowed in the buffer zone in the buffer zone you can actually set up research centers educational training centers tourism and recreational activities can be permitted in the buffer zone so it is buffer zone the option should be b However, in the manipulation or the uh, in the manipulation zone, you can actually have human settlements, and that is basically entirely where tribal people and other settlements can happen. So, limited activity is allowed in the buffer zone. Tenth question says red data book. Now, red data book is established and it is usually maintained by all the conservation unions, like for example the World Conservation Union. Now, they maintain a red data book in order to make note of all the endangered animals and endangered animals and plants actually. So, basically, the red data book contains all those organisms which are currently facing the threat of extinction so or they are basically in the category of endangered group so it is second option which of the following is not done in a wildlife sanctuary in a wildlife sanctuary obviously you will not utilize the soil and flora you would not like to disturb the soil over there because it would affect the plants that are growing you will not obviously harvest plants from there also because it is exclusively meant for um, conservation and mostly when you talk about uh, wildlife sanctuary you want to conserve something you don't want to economically reap its benefits so obviously you would not do something such as soil and flora utilization in a wildlife sanctuary so the correct answer is option c 12th question says the main reason for extinction of species the major cause for biodiversity loss is habitat loss and fragmentation so destruction of habitat is the major cause option b is the major cause for biodiversity loss or extinction of species on our planet today the 13th question says which one is an endangered species now among all of these the insectivorous plant that is nepenthes cassiana which is seen in the northeastern himalayas which is basically the pitcher plant happens to be the endangered species among all the given options 14th one the 14th question says rhinoceros we have already discussed this the one horned or rhinoceros unicornis is protected in kaziranga national park of assam so the correct answer is the second option world wildlife week is observed during the first week of october okay so however if they ask you the world wildlife day it is the third of march but world wildlife week since it is a week it is from day 1 to day 8 of october so it is observed during the first week of october so the correct answer is option a now the last chapter in this week <clears throat> that is organisms and populations assertion says question 1 assertion says drought escaping plants survive in the form of seeds and fruits and why they survive in the seeds and fruit form is because these plants do not have the capacity to tolerate drought so both assertion and reason are true see because they themselves cannot tolerate in their plant in their adult condition they cannot tolerate the drought they cannot tolerate a lack of water or dehydration that's why they have certain propagules in which form they can survive or in which form they can perinate or overcome the unfavorable condition which is in the form of seeds and fruits so both assertion and reason are true and reason is the correct explanation of assertion second question says removal of keystone species does not cause any serious disruption of course not if you remove a keystone species then it will obviously entirely crumble down the ecosystem because the ecosystem balance is entirely lost and keystone species are low in abundance not necessarily they may be very high in abundance than the dominant species some in most cases they may themselves be the dominant species so both assertion and reason are false so the correct answer is the last option that is both assertion and reason are false 
The third question, the term ecology was given by Ernst Haeckel. So it was Haeckel who gave this term ecology, that is the science of studying about the environment and in relation, the organisms in relation to its surrounding environment. Fourth question says, a large regional unit. When you think of a large, it means it is spread over a vast geographical area. So the answer is a biome. A biome is something which is actually a group of ecosystems that is spread over a vast geographical area. So it is option A. Fifth question says, organisms living in Arctic and Antarctic climate zones are called hekistotherms in terms of their uh, temperature ability to tolerate extremes of temperature such animals or organisms which are living in such extremes of cold conditions are referred to as hekistotherms the sixth question says the two climatic factors which largely determine the vegetation and soil type is temperature and precipitation isn't it whether the soil has enough water in it whether it allows whether the soil has become too saline or whether it is less saline whether it's acidic whether it is alkaline and uh, how the temperature is maintained in that particular environment is what determines what kind of plants grow over there isn't it so basically the factors that determine uh, the vegetation and soil type is temperature and precipitation Seventh question says the timing of seasonal activity in plants like for example plants have time they are flowering like in different seasons different plants flower depending upon the day length and depending upon the length of the night or uninterrupted darkness so uh, and also sometimes the, the process of reproduction is timed accordingly depending upon the length of the day and this kind of uh, activity where there is a seasonal activity in relation to a certain environmental condition is referred to as phenology so the correct answer is second option the bottom zone of the lake is referred to as the benthic zone of the lake. So answer is option C. The number of temperature zones in a summer lake is 3. The superficial zone is called the epilimnion and the middle zone where there is a very a huge fluctuation in temperature, a sudden drop in temperature is called the thermocline and the lower zone of temperature which is comparatively colder is referred to as the hypolimnion. So there are totally three zones of temperature in a typical summer lake. In soil prof uh, profile, the zone of alluviation, the zone of alluviation means all the minerals that are present in this area of the soil, they get leached as in they get carried away to the bottom layers of the soil. In which zone do the minerals undergo leaching to the maximum extent? It is the A zone. It represents the fertile top soil layer of the soil. So the correct answer is option B that is A zone. 11th question says a good soil is something which allows little water to enter, extra water to percolate, holds water entering it, obviously water retention capacity, its ability to hold uh, water entering it is something which is most importantly a characteristic feature. So it should be option C. It holds water entering it. It usually does not allow all the water to pass down into the groundwater table. There should be some capillary space we all discussed about. Micropores which hold capillary water in it. So it should have good amount of water retention capacity. Twelfth question says alluvial soil. If you remember what is alluvial soil, it is something that is brought about or carried by flowing water. So obviously it's a giveaway here. Ganges and Yamuna plains where rivers are actively flowing. They keep carrying sediments along with them, weathered sediments in the form of soil and such soils which get deposited elsewhere through the action of the flowing water or the water current is referred to as alluvial soil. So it is option D. Thirteenth question says, which of the following soil shows cracks and shrinks most when it dries in the sense it has a very high amount of porosity and it holds a lot of water and it shrinks very easily and it becomes very tough when it dries. It is the clay soil. So the correct answer is option B. The fourteenth question says, find the odd one out. The odd one out among all the following is Rafflesia. Here they have mentioned that Rafflesia grows on the root, which is false, because Rafflesia grows on aerial shoots of certain plants, which have trailing stems, which is referred to as 
the vine so it basically grows on the vine and the only part of the raplacia plant that is visible to our eye is the giant flower the rest of the plant is basically uh, it has basically penetrated into the vine of the host plant it is an entire parasite or a holoparasite so the last option happens to be an odd option because it is not the root it is the vines of a forest tree find the odd one out mating competition aggression aggregation and altruism if you see almost all except competition almost all of them are positive cooperative type of interactions mating is cooperation to ensure continuity of species aggregation is also cooperation to deal with a certain environmental challenge or to forage for food or to ensure that they survive during their lean period altruism is also something that ensures continuity of species because the weaker ones sacrifice their life for the stronger ones to survive to be able to grow and reproduce and pass on their genetic material to their next generation except competition which happens to be a negative interaction it is not a form of cooperation so the odd one out here is competition so with this we will complete the practice questions of all the three chapters for this week's crash course thank you